Christ's Hospital School moved from the city of London to new buildings in Horsham, West Sussex, in 1902. I've come along on this very, very bitterly cold morning to try and find out more, really, about Thomas's obviously school days and, um, and how he fared at Christ's Hospital. And also, maybe, I don't know whether it's, there's anything that to find out perhaps about Edward King, because he's obviously been a hugely influential, important part in Thomas's life. Today, Christ's Hospital is an independent boarding school. Pupils still wear the same uniform as in Thomas Billingham's day. So what year was it exactly relocated from London down? To... Gary's meeting the school's museum curator, former teacher Mike Barford. I'm no Inspector Morse, but by the very <laughs> fact you've got a few things gathered on this table suggests to me that you might have something well, that's for me. Well, just possible that I do have, yes. <laughs> well, Where can we start? Shall we start with this? This is a gentleman's magazine from 1807. That's the year Edward King died. And this magazine has his obituary. You might like to read a few lines. You'll get the flavour from that. Mm. It's age 72, Edward King, Esquire, a writer of considerable eccentricity. We believe him to be a most pious and well-meaning character. And it's clear from that that he did marry late in life, but he didn't have any children of his own. Uh, which may explain why he was the benefactor of, of Thomas, possibly, that well, took indeed. him on as perhaps sort of his own. Yeah. It's a, a very philanthropic mm. gesture, mm. for which he had nothing in return other than the pleasure of seeing Thomas thrive. Well, on behalf of our family, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> yes. it's a, it's a tremendous yeah. gesture. Yes. Great. Well, I've got another document here concerning Edward King that would interest you. This is an extract from his personal cash book. Oh, wow. Edmund King's cash book. Given to Tom Billingham at school. What's that, like ten shillings and sixpence yeah. would that be? In yeah. old money? I can just about remember old money. That would be his pocket money. He obviously called him Tom, didn't Tom. he? I'm not going to call him Thomas anymore. It's Tom, Tom. from now on. I think Tom Billingham's got a ring to it. Yeah. With Edward King's help, Tom entered a world of privilege, far removed from the hard manual life of his gardener father. Boys were assigned to one of three specialist school departments. One for those going on to university, another for those going to sea, and thirdly, a writing school for pupils like young Tom, intended for a career in commerce. What we do have, something which Tom might typically have done, this is a piece of calligraphy by somebody who was an exact contemporary of Tom's. If you look here, George Robinson, mm. aged 14 years, 9th of July, 1803. I mean, it's just beautiful, sort of flamboyant writing, isn't it? Yes. I know that Tom had something wrong with his eye. That's right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's quite remarkable that he latterly went on to That's do right, this sort yeah. of writing. Absolutely. I think the real thing to take away is just the standard of the education yeah. that they were given, because it did convert boys, poor children, with possibly very few prospects, yeah. gave them a chance of a better life. Great opportunity. Yeah. In the writing school, there were a lot of boys in a class. There were 130, 130 in, each, in, a class. in each class. So whether George was in Tom's class... Might have been his mate. Might have been his mate. Yeah. Couldn't know him very well, but George was a champion. He won a, the prize for the best writer in the whole of his class, but no reason why Tom wouldn't have... Uh, been runner-up, probably. Well, almost certainly, I would have oh, thought. An unlucky runner-up, yeah. I would have thought. Robbed. Ro well, you know, you, I'm sure you've come across this... Boy Tom was robbed. Boy Tom was robbed. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more little book. One more little book. Well, it's about... I thought you might be interested in the games and sports they played. Oh, totally. It's called The Boy's Own Book, and it's a book of boys' sports and games. There's a little paragraph here that you might be interested ah, to see. Ah, football. A match is made between two sets of players of equal numbers. A large ball made of light materials. A blown bladder cased with leather is the best. Uh, it's placed between them, and the object of each party is to kick the ball across the goal of the other and to prevent it from passing their own. That's a great way of summing up um, the game of football. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
The game is commenced between the two goals, which are about 100 yards asunder. If it ends in a draw, it's a penalty shootout and the Germans win. That's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> so I made that bit of that. No, um, <laughs> I wonder if he was any good, Tom. No, I don't know. You never know. It's got to come yeah. from somewhere, could sure. Could be in the jeans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could, could, could be your man. Yeah, it could be. Perhaps that's where he learnt it, on yeah. that playground. At school, my last report said, concentrates far too much on football. You can never earn a living at that. <sighs> they didn't. They were right about one thing. <laughs> yes, they were right about one thing. <laughs> I certainly concentrated too much yes. on sport. Hello. You all right? He's come to the BBC studios in Salford, where he'll be... Presented. ...the son of a gardener. I thought he might have come from perhaps a more well-to-do background which suggests he must have been reasonably academic. 